Today, we'll talk about one of my favorite topics in beekeeping, bee behavior. And while we won't be able to describe all of the neat bee behaviors, we'll dig into some of the key behaviors and how they affect the colony and you as a beekeeper. Let's start this bee behavior journey with a closer look at the life cycle of a worker bee. After development, bees emerge as adults. Worker bees have various roles within the colony that change with their age. This is known as polyethism. Worker bees keep tabs on the hive through communication, mainly scent and vibrations. In this chart, the yellow section of the timeline is the worker bee's development life cycle. She'll spend about one third of her full life cycle in this development phase. Once she emerges, she'll begin working in the hive immediately. Starting with cleaning up her own cell and eating pollen, she'll quickly begin caring for older larvae, feeding them pollen as well. This is the start of her journey as a nurse bee. As her hyperpharyngeal glands develop, she'll begin feeding younger larvae royal jelly. It's about this time that she'll take her first trip outside the hive for an orientation flight. At the age of about 12 to 14 days, the worker bee's wax secretion glands are active and she'll begin to build comb and work around the hive, storing and ripening nectar before she graduates to her duties as a guard bee. The guard bee duties are the last duties before the worker begins to forage, which she'll do for the remainder of her life. This is a good time to note that while this is a typical timeline for a worker bee, they can actually pivot to what the hive needs, staying in a job longer or advancing to a new job more quickly. Young nurse bees can sometimes be easily spotted because they emerge with a whitish tint to them. The youngest bees in the hive are found in the brood nest caring for baby bees. This can be an important fact to know when managing bees. For example, when you're making splits, making sure you put young bees who haven't been foraging into a new box can ensure that the bees will not drift back to their original home because they don't know where they live yet. Bees will festoon when building comb. This festooning bee chain is working hard to construct new comb from the wax secretions. The other image shows how the wax flakes come out of the segments in the abdomen and harden when they hit the air. This is similar to oils we secrete as humans, except bees will use this wax to mold their home. Understanding orientation flights will help you avoid panic when you see the chaos happening outside of your hive. Orientation flights are for the bees to map their home location so that they can find it when returning from foraging. We already mentioned that this happens when the bees are about eight days of age. These bees often climb up the front of the hives before flying up and out in a spiral, which is one helpful way to differentiate this from what we call robbing behavior. Recognizing robbing in contrast consists of more chaos than orientation flights. And upon closer look, you'll see a lot of bees on bee violence as well, tugging, pulling, and fighting. Another telltale sign is if the bees are trying to get into the seams and edges of the boxes where gaps let the smell of the hive escape. The job of ripening nectar consists of fanning at the entrance of the hive as well as moving nectar inside the hive. By passing nectar from one bee to another, more moisture is removed by the bee's body and their stomach actually separates some pollen for their own consumption as well, like a little filter. Bees will also use this fanning method to cool the hive during the heat of the summer months. It's really important to understand that one of the key aspects of bee communication is smells. Everything in the hive has a smell and lets off pheromones, from brood pheromones to queen and alarm pheromones. There's a scent to everything. This is how the bees keep tabs on the status of the hive. They can sense when something is off through scent. Learning about these various pheromones can help you to better understand a lot of behavior that you see in the hive upon closer thought and observation. Bees also communicate through vibrations and movements. They'll even dance to describe food locations to their sisters. One of those key pheromones is the queen pheromone. Not only does the queen emit this pheromone, but the worker bees spread the scent around to each other throughout the hive. This is why the phenomenon of bees marching into a box when a swarm is captured is so predictable. Bees will always follow the queen into that box. 
After she emerges, a queen bee will go on her mating flight about five days later after her exoskeleton has hardened and her pheromones become active. Once she leaves the hive, she will mate with as many drones as she can on her mating flight. If her flight fails and she didn't successfully mate with enough drones, she may try again another time or two. Since a poorly mated queen will cause problems within the hive and ultimately live a shorter life, it's important that the queen mate well. On average, a queen will mate with about 12 drones. Once she returns from her mating flight, the worker bees will care for her and clean her up. Then the queen will typically begin laying within a couple of days. During this waiting period, the collected sperm is stored and mixed inside her oviducts. This stored sperm will last her entire lifetime. If at any point the queen becomes infertile or runs out of sperm, the worker bees are quick to replace her. In many cases, the emerging queen bees have competition. Worker bees often hedge their bets with multiple queen cells, especially when swarming. So the first queen to emerge will pipe and announce her arrival. It sounds like a tiny kazoo. This sound is to warn the other queen that it's time to leave, as well as a battle cry as she searches for any competition from her sisters. The newly emerged queen will search for other queen cells and often stab through the wax to kill the developing queen. The goal is to be the last queen standing and take over the existing resources within the hive. In many cases where it's time to swarm, the old or original queen will fly away, taking with her 40 to 60% of the bees from the hive, and then they'll land in a temporary location while they search for a more permanent home. The bee dancing comes into play again during this process, where scout bees will come back to the swarm and tell the bees where they found a potential home site. More scout bees will follow, and eventually the swarm will decide which bees to follow based on the majority. Drone bees are often given the reputation of being good for nothing, but in reality, they play an important role in the genetics of the hive, as well as morale. They're cared for by worker bees throughout the growth seasons, but are kicked out of the hive prior to winter in order to save the hive's resources. We'll end this behavioral discussion on one of my favorite but mysterious behaviors. Known as washboarding, this line dance occurs seemingly randomly, although I notice it most during high humidity or after rain. It's thought that they may be cleaning tiny microorganisms or polishing so that those organisms can't grow, but whatever they're doing, it looks like a party. We hope you learned something about the fascinating behavior of honeybees today. Let us know what your favorite bee behavior is, and thanks for continuing to learn about honeybees with us. Until next time, enjoy your bees.